How to win in League of Legends Jungle Edition To win a game of League of Legends you must reach and destroy the enemy nexus. But in order to do that you must first go through three turrets, an inhibitor and then two more turrets to actually have the ability to hit and destroy the enemy nexus. Now, if you've been playing League for any amount of time, this will sound really simple to you in theory, but when you factor in things like minion waves, laners, junglers, neutral objectives, and so on, then the idea of winning in League of Legends starts to become a bit more of a complex topic, and as a result, most players are unable to figure out how they must play to win, and as a result, eventually get stuck. If you are one of those players or you are someone looking to improve your gameplay, then continue watching this video because I will be getting into the nitty gritty of how to win in League of Legends now. To keep it short and simple, the only thing stopping you from pushing minions towards the enemy base and destroying the enemy nexus is the enemy team because they will not only protect their own turrets, but they will also try to do the same to you. Therefore, if we can get rid of the enemy players, then it would be a simple straight line into the enemy nexus, provided we have a minion wave with us to tank, so that we can attack the turrets. So we have to ask ourselves, how can we consistently get rid of the enemy players so that we can push towards the nexus? Or in other words, how do we make them recall, or better yet, kill them over and over so that we can take their base? Well, one easy idea would be by having more gold than the enemy team, which would convert into having more items, into having more champion stats. By having more champion stats, this will allow you to consistently win fights and will allow you to force the enemy to base, and that is what will allow you to actually push towards their nexus. So again, it sounds simple and easy, but now we have to dive into another question, being how do you get more gold than the enemy team in the first place, because if all players are playing to win, then surely it won't be as easy as it sounds so far. So the answer to that question will be to simply play better than the enemy, which could have been expected, but if you fully understood everything so far, then it should become clear to you at this stage that League of Legends is largely a gold maximizing game, and that the player in a 1v1 or the team in a 5v5 that has more gold, aka more items and stats will likely be victorious. With all of that said, your strategy should now become to maximize your gold income in your games, because if you can do that better than your enemy, you will also win more games than them. And keep in mind that maximizing gold income can come in more than just one form, and that one of those forms is finding and acting on opportunities where you can deny the enemy gold without losing any yourself. So for the ultimate question everyone's been waiting for is how do you do it in the jungle role? You have camps to kill, you have lanes you can gank, you have an enemy jungler you can attempt to kill, and so on. So what should you do? What is the best course of action? Well, if you have watched any of my videos in the past, you would see that the gameplay in each video of a rank 1 jungler is really quite similar and that is because they are all playing to win the game by maximizing their gold income, either individually or as a team as we've been talking about. But if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, then let me introduce you to clearing and pathing efficiency, champion identity, balancing ganking and farming, jungle tracking to find opportunities, and avoiding the coin flip bad situations. First of all, clearing and pathing efficiency. If you have ever watched any challenger junglers play, you will see that they often clear in a straight line from one side to the other. This is because it is the most gold maximizing and efficient way to clear your camps and have them respawn as soon as possible so you can farm them for gold and experience sooner rather than later. However, just because this is the most efficient way to clear doesn't mean you should do this on every single champion you play because some champions are better played less efficiently as a result of their champion identity. One such example would be Elise, because her strengths are in her ability to gank and dive lanes, and not at all in her clear speed. She maximizes gold by getting more kills than a farming jungler would. The same would be true for a champion like Trundle, who is all about doing a 3 or 4 camp clear the same as Elise, and keeping an eye out for good ganks on immobile enemy laners that will result in a kill or an advantage for your laners, because remember, League of Legends is a team game, and if you set your laners up to win their lanes, then that can also be another form of maximizing gold income, just not for yourself. Secondly, balancing ganking and farming. 
This is something the majority of junglers have a problem with up until high elo, and there is actually quite a simple solution for this problem. Since you're playing to maximize your gold income, you will be pathing efficiently in a straight line or in a 3 camp, 4 camp clear fashion like Trundle Elise, so the only time you should move away from clearing efficiently during laning phase must be when there is a more valuable action available to you, whether that is in the form of ganking, counter ganking or counter jungling. So to make this easier for you to determine, a gold value can be placed on each source of gold available to us. Camps are on average worth 100 gold, champion kills are worth 300 gold aka a full jungle quadrant, an assist in a jungle gank brings this up to 450 gold, and enemy camps can be said to be worth more than 200 gold, not only because you will deny them from 100 gold for however long a camp takes to respawn on the patch you are watching this video on, but because you will gain 100 gold for yourself from the camp kill and then another 100 when you farm the same camp that you stole but in your own jungle. Essentially what I want you to take from this is that you should default to farming, but if you see something better you need to act on it as soon as possible. And as for ganking, you should only be going for ones that look like they are a high percentage chance of a kill. If the enemy is immobile and far up and you know you can kill them with CC or they are low or 50% HP and can be dove under tower, you need to be going to make those plays. Thirdly, jungle tracking. Now, you don't necessarily have to count camps because not even rank 1 junglers would always do that, but you have to be roughly aware of what the enemy jungle is up to, what their options are, and they're clear. Why you might ask? Because this will open you up to finding big jungle gap opportunities where you can really gain a big lead in a short amount of time. So jungle tracking will start when you are killing your first buff. So essentially you have to stare at the map as you do your first buff to figure out where the enemy starts because it will tell you their options and potentially even their clear depending on their champion identity like we talked about earlier. For example, you can deduce a Hecarim or a Diana would full clear and a Xin Zhao or Lee Sin starting on red buff will do a 5 camp clear towards their blue, gromp and so on. And this could tell you to take their Krugs if you are full clearing and pathing opposite ways. So that's one opportunity right there for a jungle gap. And another would be to counter gank by waiting for them to gank a lane that is pushing up and then kill them and even potentially take their camps. So these are just some of the opportunities that will be opened up to you if you can successfully track the enemy jungler. Lastly, avoiding bad coin flip situations. The most obvious one would be the first scuttle fight because with jungle tracking you will know straight away from level 1 will you meet the enemy jungler at the crab or not. The decision for whether you go for that crab if you're both pathing towards it will thus have to rely on lane priority because you do not want to fight them in the river and then end up being killed by the enemy mid laner. That would be a bad situation, even worse than a coin flip, so you want to avoid these kind of situations because they are not conducive to gaining a gold lead and winning games at all. Um, another coin flip or poor situation would be trying to counter gank for a laner who is clearly losing or behind in their lane. So you would see they have less health, less minions to fight with, and yet another situation would be just flat out taking a 2 versus 2 coin flip with no clear advantage, or even worse of a situation, you'd be taking a 2 versus 3 fight. So I've picked out this game as an example of what happens when you don't respect priority for the first crab and what usually happens in lower elos because there is no jungle tracking at play there. Just for reference, this is a very high elo Korean challenger game. So as you can see, that didn't work out too well. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video. I hope you learned a lot and I want you to just keep in mind that this was not a guide done to 100% because that would take a ridiculous amount of time to make a video on because there are a lot of other details that I didn't include, like the details on neutral objectives, heralds, how to use them, how to understand lane matchups, how to decide what lane to path towards and such other ideas or strategies. Um, if I did manage to provide some value to you, please do consider subscribing and leaving me a comment 
letting me know that you would like to see more of this type of in-depth uh, content um, or just let me know of any other ideas you might have for me. Thanks for watching.